Well, if I might be a boss of boots just for once, I think that you should politely request that Mr. McMichael to sling his hook right away. So as when Mr. Nash gets here, in about 28 minutes now, I should think, <laughs> and anyway, dear, crying will only make your eyes red. Thank you. I'll um, give you a shout, shall I? With okay. The and I think a nice cup of tea for me. Now, don't you look at me like that. It's none of your business. No, it was the only time, but it was only because Charlie Pritchard took me on my pier while you was finishing a game of billiards. Charlie Pritchard. <laughs> I can't even remember what he looks like now, poor soul. Mind you, she's been doing a lot of weeping lately, and I think it's his new job. There's more money coming in, but I don't think they're as happy. It's funny how that happens. Still, they wouldn't be happy with less coming in, I sort of think. I think this common market is going to do more harm than good. He wrote me a very nice letter, though, Charlie Pritchard did, after he'd heard about Alamein. Yes. Lovely sentiments about how you was the salt of the earth and that, and how I must look to the future and be grateful of the few years we'd had. It was a beautiful letter. Except I wasn't all that keen on how he put little circles instead of full stops. It's doing it again. She's only human. It's every day. No, it's not. We were away for the day at Easter. Morning. Morning. I've, uh, I've been staying the night. Oh, yes. In the guest room. Good job I'll give it a good dusting last week, then, really. Yes. Bye-bye, then. All the best. Thank you. Yes, you too. Not illegal. Not for pedigrees. Oh. Has anything happened? Uh, Is she all right? Oh, I haven't seen her yet, sir. She, she must still be sleeping. The sleep of the just. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. No. Mr. Nash, shall I take your coat? <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, come 
Oh, and it's your phone. You're both out of bed now. Both beds. I should answer that if I were you, my good Laura Twitface, wanting to know where you couldn't have knickers. Wasn't she wearing any in the first place? The Nash resident speaking. No, it's the Queen of Bleeding Tonga, isn't it? <laughs> Just think. Oh, thanks ever so, but uh, it's a bit inconvenient at the moment. So I'll see you tonight uh, at the boozer, eh? Oh. And, and thanks, Arlene. I never knew her name was Hilda. Hilda Kappa. Sounds like a letter in the Greek alphabet. You mean you don't live in a state? Nothing happened. You slept with another sodding woman. Why did nothing happen? Were you too drunk? Too tired? Or couldn't you find a bag to put over her twit face? It's Mrs. Capper's birthday. What? Mrs. Capper. It's her birthday. You went to bed with Laura Twitface because it's Mrs. Capper's birthday. What? What are you talking about? I mean, goodness. God, I've heard some lame excuses in my time, but... No, no, I, I was mentioning it was Mrs. Capper's birthday, but because I... Of Audrey. Honestly, nothing happened. What's more, it'll never happen again. I slept on her settee. <laughs> how, how long am I in the doghouse for? Oh, what a rough guess, dear, with time off for good behaviour. Say the rest of your life. Mrs. Capper, you're a marvel. Thank you, Mum. But once the sink was sorted out, it wasn't really. Oh, I see what you mean, no. Even if you were the lousiest cleaner in London, you'd still be a marvel. Oh, that. How are things now between you and Mr. Happy Nash? birthday, dear. <laughs> Thanks, Eva, but you really shouldn't. Here, this is off your dressing table. That's the diamond one, dear. Diamond and amethyst. Victoria. Oh, no. Oh, I couldn't take that, dear. No, oh. no. I couldn't possibly. Ha happy birthday, Mrs. Capper. Uh, thank you, sir. And thank you both of you. But really, I and don't think you should have... you. Me, mm -hmm. Mum? Whatever for. For everything. Don't mind if I have a bit of a snooze, do you, dear? And then I'll go down and I'll have a quick look at her news of the world, sharpish, while she's at church, and have a bit of lunch. I'm veering ever so slightly towards sardines on toast. Yeah, I've been fancying sardines ever since Mrs. Nash mentioned scrambled eggs. Only thing is, whether to have them in oil or tomato, but I'll cross that one when I come to it. Oh, I've got a couple of pairs of stockings to wash out and all. Well, the washing don't do itself, does it? Put the laundries out of business, that would. Still, I'll save that till after me sardines. <sighs> oh, I know. I know I can afford to buy my own news of the world, but that is not the point. You see, she leaves it specially folded so she can tell if I've opened it before she has. She's trying to catch me out. Well, she'll have to get up early. She hasn't caught me out, not once. Well, not yet. 
So you see, uh, if I was to get me own, well, there'd be no pleasure in it for either of us, would there? So I should just nod off for a minute or two, dear, if you don't mind. Yes. I wish I could finish that dream. Mm. Yes, I was uh, counting on finding you in. I was looking at that old clock and I said, right, monkey, now will be a good time. <laughs> and so here we are and many happy returns of the day. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gotson, but you shouldn't have, you really shouldn't. Alice will be back soon, I expect. It isn't Alice I've come to see. Aren't you going to open it? Oh, yes, of course, yes. Sorry. Oh. It's ever so pretty. But you shouldn't have. You really shouldn't. It'll look lovely with flowers in it. Yes, that's what I thought. I'll put the kettle on, shall I? And if you want to smoke, um, I wonder would you mind using the... Uh, present from Bogner, only Alice doesn't like the brass one mucking up. Ta. Right. Now don't you sniff your nose at me. He's her little friend, not mine. I didn't know he was coming. Blooming cake. This time of day. Nobody's invented sardine cake yet, I noticed. So, he's been looking at me in a funny way the last few weeks, and I think she's noticed. <sighs> Dare say that's why she's been looking at me in a funny way and all. If it tastes a bit stale, it's only because it's yesterday's. We weren't expecting company, you see. Still, she'll be back in a minute. She can take till Christmas, if she likes. Pardon? I've been wanting to talk to you, Mrs. Kepper, for some weeks now. Oh? Alone. I see. What about? Ever since I saw Evelyn Lay in No Sex, Please, We're British. You want to talk to me about sex, please? You're British. No, it's No Sex, Please. Oh. Yeah, I was there, you see. And it was on the bus coming home, I said to myself, Right, monkey, you want to talk to that Ilda Kappa. <laughs> Would you like a little more cake? <laughs> you see... Mrs. Kappler, it's ten years now since Mrs. Godsaw passed over. Ten? Really? Yes. And my little tobacconist shop is still doing as well as ever. Touch wood. Oh, good. <laughs> anyway, I, what I what I was trying to say, Mrs. Kappler, was... Miss, Mr. Godsaw, I think I have an idea what you're trying to say. And... It's ever so kind of you, and I do appreciate it, but honestly, I think Miss Evelyn Lay must have gone to your head. No, I thought it before then. But that was the night when I decided that I ought to... Mr. Godsell! I couldn't. Because of Alice? Oh, no, not Alice. Because of me? Because of me. I like you, Mr. Godsell. And I hope we'll always be friends friends, but I'm sorry. The 7th of June, 1936. Sorry? On a bus back from Wembley. 
No, I'm sorry, I don't. That was the last time I was asked.